Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris McCann. Blessed Resurrection Day Sunday to you. What does it really mean to believe on Christ? Because he said, I'm the resurrection and the life, Christ says, all who believe in me shall never die but have eternal life. How do we know, apart from the intellect, how do you really know that you're a true believer? Well, how do we know we're a believer? You know, there's a lot of people who tell themselves they're believers, and they think they're saved because of various reasons. Some because they accepted Christ, some because maybe they've gone to church as long as they can remember. Others because they believe certain things. And, you know, the assurance of salvation is best left to God. It is really something like repentance and faith. What does the Bible tell us? And you know, men tend to intermeddle with all wisdom. And they insert themselves in things like repentance. And they think, well, I'll repent. I'll believe. They insert themselves into God's salvation program by thinking they'll exercise their faith. And yet, on each point, it's always God. God grants repentance. We read this in 2 Timothy 2, verse 25, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So God gives repentance. Same thing with faith. It is the gift of God, and Christ is faith himself. Likewise, with the spiritual blessing of assurance to know that you're saved. Well, how can I know? Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. It is something we can ask God. Oh, Lord, I pray that you will help me to know I'm a child of God. And it's through the Spirit of God, according to Romans 8, that we know we're children of God. As it says in Romans 8, 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And the Spirit bearing witness, to bear witness you testify, you speak. So the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. It speaks to our spirit that we are the children of God. Well, how does the Spirit speak? There's another statement that goes along with this in Psalm 35, verse 3. Draw out also the spear, and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. So that's basically a petition, a prayer to God. Say, speak, bear witness. God, the Holy Spirit, you is the prayer. May you bear witness and speak unto my soul. So the Spirit speaks unto our spirit. And what does he say? I am thy salvation. That is a very good prayer for us to pray to God. Oh, Lord, I know that your salvation is complete as far as saving everyone that you intended to save. And I just pray that I might have been amongst that number, counted amongst your sheep. And could it be now in this time of testing, in this day of judgment, that you will speak to my soul, that you will confirm that you did save me. I don't want to tell myself because I don't trust myself. I know the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And because I'm a man, that's why I don't trust that I can know my own heart. But I trust you, O oh Lord, I trust your word. Therefore, you speak to my soul. You do the convincing. And we can keep praying that. And what will happen if we're one of God's elect is we'll start doing the will of God more and more. We'll keep his commandments and we'll continue holding on to the truth or sound doctrine as we go along. And that's a testimony. That's evidence also, as we see people falling to the left and falling to the right, going back to Egypt, going back to the church, going back to former doctrine. And yet here we are continuing outside the church, continuing to trust the Lord on the doctrines he graciously opened up to the understanding of his people at the time of the end and waiting on him despite all circumstances. 
And so that would mean, okay, up until now, by God's grace, I've been able to endure, and the end is in sight. So there's evidence that we look at ourselves. The Bible does tell us to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith, according to 2 Corinthians 13. But beware of coming to your own conclusion. Because the Bible tells us to examine ourselves does not mean that God wants us to draw our own conclusion. No, just like the Bible tells us to believe. Beware if you say, well, I'll believe. The Bible says repent. Beware if you say, well, I'm going to repent of my own strength. Likewise, examine yourself, but then realize I cannot carry out sufficiently the self-examination that is necessary of my inward being. It's just beyond me. Who can know their own heart? And so we take the command to examine ourselves, and we go to God, and we say, Oh, Lord, you do it. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way within me. That's Psalm 139. So we turn over that search to God. It's like the virus on your computer. How well are you going to be to root it out by doing a search yourself of every file in your computer? No, you're not going to find the virus, but you turn it over to some kind of antivirus, allow it to do the search. That's a poor example, but that's the idea. We have the virus of sin. We say, oh, Lord, I want to make sure that I'm truly born again. I know you command me to do the search, but I cannot. So please search me. And God will very perfectly perform the search necessary. And then he can witness as well. He can witness to us that we're truly a child of God. Mm -hmm.